Welcome back, and there's confirmation of what's been happening so far today. Well, we're left with the fifth and final match of the, today's coverage, and it's the battle of the big guys. Two of the biggest and tallest uh, athletes around on the scene at the moment. Vladimir Ivanov against uh, Mads Kolding. The two tallest athletes on the circuit at the moment. Here's the route through to the semi-final. It's as seeded, nothing to choose between them, second and third seeds. And the same with the world rankings, eight and nine in the world rankings. So this is a really tight one. Both got through in straight sets, through to this semi-final. And there's a lot of history between these two pairs. Probably on paper in terms of world ranking, the game of the day, I'd have to say. Two top ten pairs, eight and nine in the world. There's the Russian pair coming out onto court. Former European champions playing current European champions. And, of course, the Russians have got that even bigger title on their resume now. All England holders, which they'll be defending next week. And coincidentally, their first round opponents will be today's opponents next week in Birmingham. So they'll be seeing each other again next Wednesday. to these athletes when they come out onto court. Yeah, it's even of the small guy next to Mass Culling. That's uh, pretty amazing <laughs> to see, isn't it? <laughs> We're going to see the statistics in a minute, but in the online statistics I was looking at at Vladimir Ivanov, he's got him at 1 meter 97. Well, they use strange tape measured in Russia because I've stood next to him and he's more than that. Yeah. I'm sure Matt's holding down at two meters five. Is, yeah, I can see that, but Ivanov's a big guy as well. There he is, there it is, two meters five, world ranked eight. More importantly than his height is the level of play. He's been as high as seven in the world rankings, now sitting at eight, current European champions. But they're building up quite a resume, this, uh, this Danish pair. They've got some terrific results. Some real break, breakthroughs, two Super Series finals. The only thing they've yet to do there is actually finish one off and win a Super Series. Partner, Mats Conrad, 186. Looks quite short next to his partner. Same rankings as you'd expect, currently ranked eight, in as high as seven. But they're becoming a really established top pair on the circuit, these two. In their early days, they were a little bit inconsistent, but in the last 12 months, they've really steadied up and they've become very, very difficult to beat. There's the route through to the final. They had a tricky first round match against the former world and uh, Olympic champion, Setiawan, playing with his new partner, the Malaysian, Tambun Hyung. Three sets, 50 minutes. But since then, they've been reasonably comfortable in the second round and the quarter final, you'd have to say, living up to their seeding. Over to the Russian pair, the left-handed Ivan Sozanov. 184, the shortest guy on court. Not often you're going to hear that. At their highest rankings, this is high as they've been, number nine. But a really, really dangerous pair as they proved by winning that All England title last year. Ivanov, 197. I think there's a couple of centimetres to be put on top of that, I have to say. 29 years of age now, been around. Had an early career as a singles player, very tricky singles player. He's won at this level of tournament at singles. He's won a gold Grand Prix, uh, Grand Prix gold in, uh, in singles, but really found his niche when he moved over into the doubles. But also a very, very tricky mixed player as well. Had some good wins in mixed, beating some of the top pairs in the world, even at mixed. Here's their route through. Oh, not their route through, that's the Danish route again. Sorry for that. And this should be the, Dan uh, the Russian route through. Again, one tricky match in that second round against the Hong Kong pair. Another up and coming pair, but reasonably comfortable in the end in the third game. 
the other two matches they were able to see off in straight sets. Well, I'm glad we're getting this head-to-head -head because there's some history here. Head-to-head, Rees. 6-3 to the Danish pair. Disregard that last one there a little bit. That was the first tournament back from for Ivanov having um, having very very serious injury and Achilles tendon rupture. So, uh, but last year they played three times and they had three epic matches during 2016. There's our umpire from Germany, Andrew Vlash. And service judge Justin Zhu, all the way from New Zealand. Missing out on his summer over there and coming to the European winter. Well, Steen, we've both seen this match a few times. How do you, how do you see this one? Uh, <laughs> I hope it's going to be a great match. Um, I think the Danes are, um, are feeling in good shape, but they had, um, they had a tough time since not being selected for the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, of course, Bourne Morgensen were the Danes selected to represent Denmark, and they had a down period there. Mads Conrad became a father uh, almost a year ago to a baby daughter, and um, they were struggling a little bit. But they refound their confidence and, and their game at the uh, Super Series finals in, in Dubai. Yeah. Um, the Russians, they, they must be looking forward to the All England to defending their title. And, and we know that they're in, in good shape. Um, as you know, mentioned, Ivanov, the versatile player of the two, um, recently in the European uh, Mixed Team Championship, helped Russia to uh, a silver medal by uh, beating uh, Chris and Gabby Atkuk in, in the semi final together with the Yekaterina Boroteva. So he can play all three categories. And, and uh, when the things are rolling for. for Ivanov and Sosanov, they are so dangerous. It's it's a lot that comes down to the service situation. That that's yeah. that's going to be the key, in my opinion. And how good a day Mas Conrad has in sort of um, um, taking these rushes towards the uh, net and setting up um, the attack for the Danes. I guess you'd have to say two converted singles players on this course because Conrad yeah. started off in singles, didn't he? Had he was promising. Um, yeah, he, he was, but um, it was obvious to most uh, coaches that it was in doubles that he would have his um, his career. But he, he wanted to pursue the singles opportunity as he won the European Junior Championships in men's singles, and that sort of delayed his double career a little bit. Um, but never really made try as a senior singles player. Here we go, expect a lot of these rallies. Hard and flat, neither pair wanting to give the lift, that's for sure. And for me, one of the big keys in this game is uh, Sozanov. If Sozanov yes. gets on that front court, he is lethal. And I mean, he can take on the absolute best. I remember him playing Lee Yun Day last year and just took him apart on the front court, which was amazing Beaten for me. twice yeah. last year in yeah. the All England and the Olympics. And the key was Sozanov. Yeah. I mean, if he serves well and gets on that front court and gets set, wow. Exactly, if he serves wow. well. Wow. He can be really destructive. And that, I mean, it's going to be a tactical battle as well because, of course, the Danes, they know this. They know that um, they've got to control the service situation, got to put it below the tape. Got to flick Sosanov um, to get him off his comfort zone and hope that <laughs> that Ivanov <laughs> gets a little bit um, annoyed <laughs> yeah. or frustrated. I don't. I don't think he, he doesn't. He, he just. Um, uh, it's so obvious when when he's uh, a little bit annoyed. Yeah. Well, that's got to be a very, very high serve, that's all I can say. Yeah, it was not, <laughs> not pointing in a downwards direction. Okay. Wow. I was going to say, he'll do well to get it above his waist. Yeah. 
<laughs> that, that was a really good serve from Ivano. And he's, he's a bit patchy as a server. Yeah. He has good days, he has really bad days serving. To me, he's never really looked a natural doubles player, but that's a bit harsh when you look at the results and the resume they've put yeah. together. But, but you, could, you could say that he's not playing a regular doubles. No. He's playing some, some sort of singles mixed double with a male player. Yeah. It's a combination. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But it, it's, it, of course, it's, it's created to utilize his strengths which is his yeah. very, very steep smash yeah. and his long reach and so on. So Sosuna, in many ways, have to adapt to that and, and sort of fill in the gaps there. So, so far. Well, seven all. It's no surprise it's even so far, seven all. Of course, extremely unlucky, uh, Sosunov um, at the European Championships. Yeah. Two Russians were playing their best ever, had just won the All England, played the European Championships in France, and Sosunov ruptured his Achilles. And, and the thing for me was, I mean, he rushed back to play the Olympics. They still made yeah. a quarter-final, but actually Fantastic. at about 70%, I would say. They, yeah. they were actually really unlucky because they were in the mix for a medal for me. They, yeah. really, they really were. The way they were playing at the All England, they, they, they were very no. capable of winning the medal in, uh, in Rio. Nobody really wanted to play them. No. And of course, they also knocked out the top seeds, Lee Young Day and uh, Yo yeah. Young Sung, yeah. before eventually losing to Piao Chai and Hong Wei in the quarterfinal. Very good defense from uh, Matt's calling. And that's an area he's improved a lot. Yeah, he has. To say. Nine, when he first eight. started, well, he, when he came over more to, uh, from mix to men's, yeah. his defense really was, wasn't up to it for me. No, it wasn't. But he's really obviously put a lot of work in because he's very solid in that area now. Yeah, and I, I actually um, advised against this men's doubles in Denmark because I couldn't really see uh, the potential in it. I Ten, thought that it would be eight. much better for Mass Colling to play the mixed doubles, but was I wrong there? Uh, and sort of forced him to better his defense because there's no way around it in, in yep. men's doubles. In mixed doubles, you could say, yeah, but you just got to have the attack and so on. Whoa! Well played. Well, that's amazing. I think Sosanoff thought he'd probably win it with the net cord. Well, Mid-game interval, three-point advantage for the Danish pair, but it's nip and tuck, I have to say. Look at this. Net cord, net cord. Fantastic touch play from the front court. Wow, seven minutes. 19 yeah. points in seven minutes, wow. N but there's a, there's a few things I like about both of these pairs. One is that they both do get on with the game. They don't particularly delay the play. No. Well, they don't. And there are a lot of top pairs at, around takes at, at the moment. That so they just never start the next point. It's, exactly. you know, and both these pairs like to get on with it, which I think is great. And the other thing I like about both of them is they have no fear of playing the, Asian, the top Asian pairs. They both step onto that court you know, with expectation of winning. And that's, yeah. that's so important for European pairs because we've been through a patch where the Asian men's pairs have dominated, really. Yeah. They definitely have the weapons to um, yeah. take up the challenge. 11, Three European pairs in uh, the semi-final here in uh, German Eight. Grand Prix Gold. Of course, it helps a little bit that uh, a number of the top Korean players have uh, retired after the Olympics. It was a good rally for Ivanov and Sosunov, where they yeah. um, worked their way out of a very defensive position. Oh, oh. That's just long. So, 
Do you think it has any effect on this match, the fact they know it's the first round next week? It's a strange situation. Yeah, I, I don't think it has effect on this match. Um, 13, nine. But this match has an effect on next week. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that the one that wins today will, will probably lose next week. Well, I might hold you to that one next week. Yeah. Even yeah, off. His touch is just off a little bit. Yeah. And he is, he's, when he misses things, it, it, it just makes him look ungainly, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I've got a lot of respect for what he's done because, he, you know, he's done it in singles to, to quite a high level. For, for his team, he can turn out and win a mix against a top, top four pair in the world. You know, and in, in with men's doubles now. With a scratch partner. With a scratch partner. And, in, uh, and, in, and he's won an All England title, you know. Yeah. From, from Russia, yeah. and they, they live and they train in Russia, they don't train anywhere else. Yeah. I think I've got so much respect for what both of these, these guys have done, I really have. And I think it's quite amazing. I mean, Russia in the past has had some good players, but this is, these two results have actually clipped all of those, uh, all of those players from the past, I would say. Danes have done really well, they've been very, very consistent in uh, trying to get the attack. Yeah. And I wonder if, if it's helping them a little bit that they're playing on the faster side of the court because they know that they have trouble lifting. So they are sort of forced to, to um, win the battle for the attack, whereas the Russians oh. probably feel, sometimes you feel that I mean, that, that's, really, that's really good. I have to say, Conrad there was in the rear court, saw the shuttle just slightly drop and was so quick in to take control of that front court area. And that's been critical so far in this game. And there he goes again. And there's the problem when they do have to lift. Yeah, so sometimes the Russians, they can say, okay, we can lift on this side. But you can't because the others, will, they will out attack you. Yeah. And yeah. So, uh, you should actually go 100% for the attack yourself because otherwise you're just going to lose in the long run. Yeah. There we see it. That is the danger from this end. Yeah. Didn't really hit it that hard, but it was a drive and it just kept going. And this is the danger when Sozanoff is serving. That's a great serve. Oh. But Conrad looking really quick on the front so court, so I have to say. Yeah, yes. Really, that's very, very quick reactions there because Sozanov played a good shot, got it below tape height. He's still able to take it very early. It's quality play. There's no room there for Sozanov because the Danes no. are overcovering. If, if you're going to play the block, you've got to play it in front of Colding, not Conrad. Yeah. He's too quick in. Yeah. That's yeah. clever. You see how many times the Danes, they flick sort of enough, and yeah. it's just um, slowly getting to the Russian player. Get him away from the front court where he feels confident. Yeah, they've got real, well, the Russians have got real problems here, obviously. You know, yeah. It's game, game points down, and they're looking around to their coach. And, and as they can go, we know they can go a little bit negative. Yeah. But I have to say, Conrad's played it such a good first set here. Sosan was sort of waving his arm, saying, what do you want me to do? Great shot. That's not. <laughs> can probably afford one, though, yeah. can't he? Yeah. Yeah, he can afford a smile at 2013. Yeah, 
there's the danger if you do relax slightly. The Russians will be straight in there. 14, and you don't want 20. to let them get a run of points here. No, and, and, and um, definitely you don't want them to get a little bit of confidence. Nope. You, you want them to keep uh, talking and discussing what to do yep. and uh, feeling that it's not going to be today. They're going to beat Jim. And, and I think the Danes, they've had reasonably good uh, success defending um, Ivanov on this side here. But when they change ends, Ivanov is having a little bit helped by the yeah. drift. So um, still crucial for the Danes to maintain control over the rallies and be on the attacking side. That's good again from Conrad. Quite fitting that he plays the winning shot, really, to take them through to the victory in the first set there. A set that you'd have to say they've dominated. But it's an interesting dimension, what you were saying there, Steen, that uh, all day we've been saying it's been a disadvantage to play from the fast end. Actually, for probably both these pairs, it's going to be an advantage playing from the fast end. Because it helps their attack. Yeah. And they're both so attacking. And, and the defense doesn't matter anyway, because no. uh, in, in the long run, no. if you play defensive against any of these two pairs, you're going to lose. Yep. Yep. And there's confirmation. 21-14. Game moved along quickly. 14 minutes. There was a lot of quality in those 14 minutes, though, I have to say. And a lot of it came from the racket of uh, Mads Conrad. Did what he had to do. Got control of the front court. Kept Sozin off out. Didn't give him any time on the front court. High quality men's doubles. Ah, oh, Jakob Hoy. Well travelled. Yeah, he's been a uh, former German national coach and an English national coach as well. Is he full time in the Danish setup now? He is, yeah. Okay. with a few more problems you'd have to say got a bit of work to do here <laughs> but they've got a lot of experience they've got a lot of experience now yeah and sometimes you know when they get a bit frustrated that's when they can get very dangerous <laughs> yeah and it's also a learning situation for them because I mean um, other pairs around the world they're, they're gonna have a look at video as well and, and they're going to see that it's a good thing to direct your defense or your flat game to the backhand side of Sosunov. So yep. he might have to be a little bit more mobile there and sometimes uh, take chances in his backhand side and move uh, before time to his Second backhand game. side. Lower. It's not certain that it will create winners, but it will definitely uh, keep the opponent Play. honest, so to speak. So if he gets too uh, focused on his forehand side, then um, they will be too, they'll become so too easy far. readable. The Russians. Yeah, I mean the the forehand play comes into play, particularly when if they can win the attack. Then yeah. if Ivanov directs his attack very well, it it, it, it gets him in on that forehand yeah. side. I mean that's the classic tactic. But, but as you say, everybody knows it now. Yeah, and, and, and it be you become too one-dimensional if yeah. you only have that recipe for yeah. a win. Yeah. And I mean, also, what are we doing when when uh, Sosanov is flicked? I mean, you you got to create so solutions so for that. Yeah. So, normally say that the overall strength of a of a double is, is decided by how well you uh, function in your non-preferred role. Yeah, I was just going to say, and that point demonstrates it a little bit. Yeah. Actually, the other thing with this combination is that we don't see it that often because they're always working for that front-back situation. But Ivanov actually is not the worst player on the front court now. No. I've seen him playing one or two of the, the, the leagues with other partners. And actually, he's quite, he can be quite destructive on the front court. He's a little bit quicker. He's a little bit ungainly, but his racket speed's actually really good. Yeah, there's one thing I, that I feel that Sosunov hasn't recovered uh, since his um, Achilles injury, and that's his sort of um, um, attacking dangerousness. I, I felt that he was more crisp and had a, yeah. a quicker release before he injured his Achilles. Yeah. And, and if he could uh, regain that, then he would set up opportunities for, for Ivanov because Sosunov should never hit as hard as possible from the backcourt. He should just hit as steep as possible so that 
uh, Sosomov can use his reach on the front court. Uh, sorry, Ivanov can use his reach. But a good start for the Russians. That was exactly what the doctor ordered during the second game. Forcing the play there. It's tough though, isn't it? If there's. It's one of probably the two worst injuries you can get in badminton, I would yeah. suggest. Uh, a ruptured Achilles, because it's not just the physical side of it, it's the mental side of it. Uh, it's so tough to come back from that injury, it really is. And to get full confidence back does take a long time, I have to say. I've seen several players go through it, I've coached players through it, and. You can get them 100% physically fit, but in their minds to push 100% on it. I think maybe next week would be a good uh, chance to sort of uh, get your mind, your unconscious mind off your Achilles because you, you've got to be in matches where where you're so invested in the match yeah. that you forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. Even your unconscious yeah. mind forgets about it. I mean... Stick him with that flick, but he's ready for it this time. And it was a good attack. Wasn't the best of flicks from, from Colling, but quick response from Sosonov there. Yeah. over you gonna have so much power yeah it was good play because he was going at colding so it wasn't giving Conrad the chance to no. get forward so that they've, they've sorted themselves out a little bit here we're not seeing as much of uh, Mads Conrad on the front court but that's wild Six, and you can say that they could sort of um, um, copy the Danish Tactical approach. It's yeah. the, 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 the pairs are constructed in the pretty much the same way. Yeah. So oh. no margin there. That's two big errors from moving off in the front court. from Sozanoff this yeah. time in the rear court. Got the shuttle going down with good steepness. Which forced the error. But to really settle in this game, you feel that they need to start picking up a few points on Sozanoff's serve. The Danes have returned so well against him so far, and that's another good return. Again, the error from Ivanov. In. Oh, good defense. It's in. Shot from Mascara. Well, he's been man of the match so far in this this match. Whoa! Okay. Ten, eight. <laughs> well, it's a good retrieve, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the, you've got to get it back. You've got to make the guy hit one more shuttle, and, and that's the way you get the mistake. I know it sounds obvious, but I don't think he was expecting that to come back. No, no. but I, I know it's speculation. I just feel in some ways that Ivanov is not 100% invested in this match. No, because normally he'd be getting very angry by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like he's the one who's having la laps of uh, yeah. concentration. Yeah. Um, I think the Russians are very, very focused on their title defense and... Um, in Birmingham next week. It's not that they don't want to win or anything like that. It's just there's just a difference between 95% and 100%. Having said that, at 9-10, they're right in this still. They are, and, really and, and that's 
sort of the best that they could hope for um, um, you know, giving the first game. Yeah, and with both of these pairs, you only have to relax for two minutes and you've lost five or six points. That's right. Uh, or even a minute, to be honest. I mean, uh, both these pairs are capable of ripping very quick points, as we see there. All right, who's going to have the advantage? <laughs> That's a good return. And he's pushed it out the side again. Well, it's 11-10, and you have to say, Ivanov there has made four really quite basic errors. Exactly. And uh, that... that and normally, if he was doing that, as you say, there'd be some, some emotion showing. N not as much as if Sosanov had made the errors. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That's a fair point. That's a fair point. On the other side, I mean, that tactically, they have managed to control it a little bit. They're not giving Conrad as many chances to no. come forward. No. So they have changed the game. They have adapted the game. And they've gotten the attack yep. more than in the first game. Yep. So... so sort of laid out before them and, and they, they have all the chances to to get back into this match they just haven't taken them yeah i have to say so far there just isn't that usual fire that you see with these two you're going off a coaching break against either of these pairs you've got to be telling you your pair to be so ready for these first yeah, few points because yeah. it's so easy against either of these pairs to lose two or three quick points that's long oh, again that's even enough 12, 10. And no reaction <laughs> oh, i mean i'm sure people think it's quite strange me saying that but normally he's an emotional guy yeah, on court yeah. He makes a big investment emotionally in all of the matches he plays. Oh, oh he's making too many yeah. errors. Yeah. The tall Russian guy. It's gone long. It's three in a row. And as I say, coming off a break against either ten. pair. Yeah. It's so dangerous, and, particularly and with Conrad serving. Yeah, because I mean that's the natural preferred position for the Danes, so if you're not careful, you'll lose points really quickly. Well played there by Sosonov. Yep. Now he's looked the more solid of the two, I have to say, in this match. And again, we talked a lot about his front court play, but as a rear court player, he's clever. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, he's a good smash. It's, it's not one of the most powerful, but it's it's still pretty got good penetration. But the placement's very good. It's out again. He's really not, not on his game, is he here? Of course, losing this match means that you get one day earlier to Birmingham, which oh. could in the end be quite crucial. I think both pairs know Birmingham pretty well now. Yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not the easiest hall to play, but it's easier to play when you played there previously, that's for sure. First, first time in Birmingham is really difficult. Yeah, it's still, there's travel, and, and uh, even though it's not a long distance, uh, it's still a factor, and I, I think, actually, that the, if there's tournaments ahead of a Premier Series, it should have uh, finals played on, on Saturday. That would be the more optimal thing to do. Yeah. Well, they're running away with this one now. It's looking fairly yeah. ominous, you have to say. It would have been easy to put an argument that this haul would have suit, suited either pair, really. It is, it is quite a quick haul. Yeah. For the, men, for the men's players. But today the difference has been uh, even off. He's, he's made too many errors. Yep. Yep. And the Danes tactically, they were well prepared. They had a game plan. Yeah. And they've come out and they've executed really well. And I would have to say particularly Conrad's had a very, very good game. Got control of the front court in that first game. Took Sozanov off it. And since then, really, they've been in complete control. 
Oh, I think that would have gone out the back as well. Oh, that's better. I have a feeling it might be too little too late. surprise there's a bit of I thought we'd have would have seen more of that today actually because with a full audience in here actually it's quite warm in here yeah. Yeah, a bit of showmanship there from comrade 18. he feels they've almost done the job as well the deceptive lift double action It's gone out the back. 14, 18. It's much better for the Danes to concentrate now than in two rallies from now when they've lost two easy points more. Oh, that's what solves enough. We haven't seen a lot of it today, but that's what he can do. 15, that was quick. That's going to go out the back. So, so far. 90, That's a great serve. Just gone out the side. Quality rally. A little bit unfortunate to miss that. But that brings up match points for the Danish pair. Five of them in total. Uh, the way Conrad's been serving and playing behind the serve, I don't think they'll need five. Never sure about a flick serve 16, on a match point personally, 20. but <laughs> maybe I'm just old fashioned with that. Put the pressure on, serve it short. Still match points. And there it is, it's all over. Two straight games to the Danish pair. And you have to say, a very convincing performance from them. Yeah, every right to be pleased with that. This is a rivalry that goes back a long way. And each victory by each of these teams is treasured over the others. There's confirmation of the scores. 32 minutes, 21-14, 21-16 to the Danish pair, Conrad and Kolding. And a very high quality performance it was. And there's the winning moment. You can see it means something. That was a battle of the previous two European champions. Continental pride at stake as well as world ranking points. Well, that completes today's play. We started off with an excellent mix, mix, mix doubles. Lu and Huang eventually coming through in three high quality sets against Tan and Lai. And it was on to ladies singles. Akane Yamaguchi, the 19 year old with already a wealth of experience overcame the American Zhang Bei Wen. Then on to men's singles, Chao Ten Chen. Fairly comfortable performance in the end over Ueda from Japan. 
two straight games, 35 minutes, and looked in ominously good form, I'd have to say. Then we were on to the ladies' doubles. Fukushima Hirata overcoming the local heroes, and what a great tournament the German pair of Hertrich and Nelta have had. But in the end, it was the Japanese pair, Fukushima and Hirata, who came through in two games in 39 minutes. And that left us with the final shootout between the big guys. And it was Conrad and Kolding at this time who overcame their old adversaries of Ivanov and Sozanov. And as I said, that will, they'll be meeting again next Wednesday in the first round of the All England in Birmingham. But today it was two straight games, 21-14, 21-16 in 32 minutes. As I say, that completes a very good day's semi-finals. And we'll be looking forward to the finals tomorrow. So from Steen Pedersen and myself, Ian Wright, it's goodbye from Mulheim, and hopefully you'll join us tomorrow for the finals. Goodbye.